Hi, in this video, I want to show you how to execute IDE actions using the IdeaVim plugin in IntelliJ. You probably have seen a previous video on what are my favorite IdeaVim features and shortcuts. And here we want to go a little bit more into the actions that you can actually trigger to combine the advantages of IdeaVim and the IDE. If we have a look at the GitHub repo of the idea of a plugin, we see that we actually can, well, first of all, execute some actions using the colon command, but also then have some key bindings to our keyboard. You can find all kind of actions using this action list from which you then can see, well, what this actually does. And you can also, well, just type this to try something out. And what I want to show you in the IDE is to just how to combine it and which actions kind of make sense. So for instance, if we have some Java code here and I open up my ID, um, idea of MRC, which you can do uh, via this menu. And then this is just some example that I use. So for instance, I use this Vim leader key a lot. Why? Because this is typically, well, I use a key uh, space here. This is typically an action that is not already used. So we have still some free keys available that we can use. So for instance, I was triggering uh, some action uh, to show the next and the previous tab. So for instance, to say, well, space and um, H or L to go like left and right for just switching the tab. Of course, in IntelliJ, you can also use Alt and then the cursor, but it really depends what well keyboard you're using. Why? Because, well, I was talking about this uh, earlier. If we use the keyboard, then we actually want to minimize the hand movements. So if we have to move our hands around and maybe look down where our hands are located, well, in comparison to that, it makes actually sense to stay on the home row and to have some movement that we actually can execute on the home row. The reason why it is a little bit easier for the setup that I'm using here is because I'm using such a keyboard, the ultimate hacking keyboard that I was showing in a previous video as well, that actually allows you to use modifier keys or something like um, insert or delete or the cursor arrows using a special modifier key, which actually enables you to just leave your hands where, where they're supposed to be on the home row, which is actually very helpful. But if we don't have such a keyboard or if we're just uh, traveling, if we use a laptop keyboard, then it might make sense to use another key such as the leader key plus something that is located on the home row. That's the reason for that. And for these actions, it really makes sense to think about, well, what are we triggering where instead I would need to use some other keyboard shortcut. So for instance, for the generate um, action, this really makes sense. So what that is, if I would like to generate uh, well getters and setters or two, st uh, two string, then usually I have something like alt insert. And then I have this menu to say, well, for example, generate getters and setters. I can also define an idea of them action here by saying, well, leader plus I, for instance, for this generate action to trigger this. So then I can say just leader key and I, and this also opens it. Might be a little bit faster, depends on your keyboard or your setup, but just think about what are the actions that are just otherwise a little bit harder to trigger. And in the same way, what we can do is to trigger or open up some uh, menus that otherwise are just really hard to get to, for instance, some settings. What I really uh, like is this quick uh, change scheme because I sometimes for my videos am changing my editor scheme. And if I then just um, switch to, let's say the normal dark color, then this, of course, it's too, uh, too small for you to see here, but this is my usual coding setup. And when I'm recording a video, this is actually much faster to change. So just these things that we otherwise, you know, would I would do manually by using the mouse and so on. For another ex um, example of using the mouse or avoiding using the mouse is for instance, to show some error description. So if we have some error here that of course, well, does not work, I could use the mouse to just hover over it, which is actually what I did uh, always in the past. But also I can say, well, just show the error description, which is an action that I could uh, trigger. So if I hit, um, shift shift and then type something for example error description 
and then it um, actually says well how this works and then I could trigger this as well. So if you hit shift shift then you can type in some action. This also works but we can trigger this action using this, um, this method. Of course, for all of these ways, it's also possible to just define or use a regular keyboard shortcut, but it really depends whether these shortcuts are easy to reach to. And using IdeaVim, we have just another method. The same is true if you want to jump to the next error. error that's a very helpful uh, shortcut in general, which is F2. But again, depending on your keyboard or your setup, if that is not easy to press, you can also define leader E or something else to just trigger the same action. So in general, it just really makes sense to think about what are the actions that we always um, trigger manually where we have a shortcut that's a little bit cumbersome to get to or we have to use a mouse. For these, it really makes sense to think about, well, what is it that we actually um, would like to execute? For me, a similar thing is the Git menu. Um, I usually use Git on a command line, but sometimes I would like to show the diff just in the IDE. And then I can say, well, um, lead a key in M for the menu and then for example show the diff I can still combine this while typing I can show it again so space M and then just quickly type for uh, for instance to open up the diff and then I see this already so I think that's just a very cool way to combine the power of using the IDE with Vim where then we can still trigger some actions so you can start something you can define or trigger an action for things that you use a lot. You can define some where there is no regular keyboard shortcut or where it is a little bit cumbersome to trigger. And I hope this is a helpful tip for you. If you're interested more in how to be more productive as a developer, you can also check out my masterclass video course that is already available. And if you enjoyed watching this, I would really appreciate a like. Thanks for watching. Bye.